your girl Ash and I am back back with another video and today I'm going to be finishing up Alexander the Great part 4 by Epic History TV. We left off with Alexander basically defeating the Persian Empire. King Dararis was finally killed. I'm not exactly sure what's going to happen in part 4. Like I've been enjoying this series and having so much fun just learning about Alexander the Great and it's just amazing to me that he has yet to lose a battle and i think that is just like extremely extremely dope and if you guys would like to connect with me through discord to talk about history the link will be down below and if you guys haven't subscribed already what are you waiting for hit the red button so you can be a part of the family don't forget to give your girl a thumbs up enough of me talking let's get straight into this reaction of just 22, Alexander, so young. ruler of the small Greek kingdom of Macedonia, had led an invasion of the vast Persian Empire. After a string of victories, he smashed Persian military power at the Battle of Gaugamela and took the Persian throne for himself. Now, in 330 BC, Alexander continued his march east. His goal, it. to find and kill Bessus, a Persian usurper claiming to be the rightful king, and to subjugate the empire's eastern provinces. Alexander headed first for Arya, today part of Afghanistan where the Persian governor, Sati Barzanes, had launched a revolt after initially pretending to submit to Alexander. The rebellion was crushed and Sati Barzanes killed in single combat by a Greek cavalry officer. Wow. Nearby, Alexander founded the city of Alexandria Ariana, modern Herat, one of around a dozen cities that Alexander would eventually found almost all bearing his name. Alexander marched on to Frada. The Macedonian court had a long tradition of plots and assassination. He's tired of fighting. Six years before, Alexander's own father, King Philip, had been murdered by his bodyguard. He was now informed that Philotas, commander of his companion cavalry, had uncovered a plot to assassinate Alexander, Ooh. but kept it secret. There it goes. There is. It was only going to be a matter of time that, you know, someone in his army or affiliated with him is going to try to take him out. They're probably just unhappy, probably just tired. Um, maybe Alexander is, you know, showing arrogance at this point. Um... Yeah, it was definitely bound to happen. Philotas and his father, Parmenion, were among the most respected of Alexander's commanders and had played crucial roles in all his great victories. But when Philotas confessed under torture, Alexander had him executed, As he then should. sent assassins back to Ecbatana, where Parmenion was governor, to kill him before he even heard of his son's death. Oh, that was smart. Had a chance to turn against Alexander. That was smart. To basically execute the father um, before he found out so they so it wouldn't be a war inside of a war that's already going on. That was definitely smart. <clears throat> In 329, Alexander resumed his pursuit of Bessus. En route, he founded the city of Alexandria Aracosia, modern Kandahar in southern Afghanistan. As he reached Kunduz, Bessus was betrayed by his own men and handed over in chains. <laughs> Alexander sent him back to Persia for execution as a king slayer. Alexander pushed on into modern Tajikistan, where the Sogdians rose up against him. 
He had to fight off attacks by local tribes and take several towns by assault. On the banks of the Jaxartes River, he founded the city of Alexandria Escate, meaning Alexandria the Furthest. Okay, does so it stop now? Because he had, at last, reached the limit of the Persian Empire. This frontier was frequently raided by nomads, known to the Greeks as Scythians. Scythians. Alexander lured them into a decisive battle near the Chaxartes. They have to be exhausted. The result was a crushing victory for the Macedonian king that put an end to the raids. But fighting against Bactrian and Sogdian tribes continued, frustrating Alexander and tying him down in a difficult guerrilla war. Tyrant. By now, many of the Macedonian troops were unhappy with Alexander. Oh boy. Most had not seen their homes in years, but their king seemed bent on conquest without end. And that's the thing. He's young. He's young. He doesn't have children. I don't think he has children as of yet. I don't think so. I didn't hear anything about him having children or being married so far. So he's young. He's ambitious. He wants to conquer the world. He's a great leader. But the thing about it is, is he don't have the things that some of these soldiers have. They have families, they have wives, they have, you know, children, and they miss that, you know? And here they are going to battle, and I'm pretty sure it's like maybe like five, six years now. They're tired, and they're, they're probably starting to show resentment or whatever, and they're probably scared to express how they feel because they might get killed. This is, this is probably where he messes up at. What was worse, he'd begun to adopt the rituals and dress of their defeated Persian enemy. Customs they viewed as effeminate and decadent. Wow. He gave where he came from. At Marakanda, modern Samarkand, after a furious drunken argument, Alexander killed Clytus the Black. Clytus had been one of Alexander's best generals, and the man who'd this saved his life at the Battle of the Granicus. Alexander was full of remorse, but his growing arrogance was alienating more and more old comrades. When he tried to make his countrymen perform the traditional Persian ritual of proskinesis, prostrating themselves before the king, he crossed a line. To Greeks, this was blasphemy. Only a god was worthy of such respect, and Alexander was forced to back down. Wow. In Bactria, another plot to assassinate Alexander was uncovered. This time, the ringleader was a royal page, one of the sons of Macedonian nobility who attended the king. Hermolaus had become murderously bitter towards Alexander over a perceived injustice. He and his accomplices were tortured and then stoned to death. Yeah. Callisthenes, Alexander's official historian, was also implicated in the conspiracy. He was thrown in prison, where he later died. <laughs> they trying to, they trying to take summer, him out, boy. In 327, According to legend, Alexander became captivated by the beauty of Roxana, daughter of a Bactrian lord. Their marriage was also a sound political move, helping to end local revolt against his rule, and allowing him to continue his advance into modern Pakistan and India. Damn.
Alexander now prepared to subdue the Persian Empire's most eastern provinces, which had yet to recognize his kingship. To do so, he would first have to cross the Hindu Kush mountains and reach the Indus River Valley. This man just don't stop. Advancing in two columns, his army won a series of skirmishes against the Aspasi and Asakani as they fought their way into what's now the Swat Valley of northern Pakistan. After a fierce siege, Alexander took the Asakanian capital of Masaga. According to legend, it was ruled by a beautiful queen, Cleophis, who bore Alexander a son and was allowed to keep her throne. The ruler of Taxila, near modern Islamabad, had formed an alliance with Alexander. Together, they marched to face Porus, king of Poravas, at the Battle of the Hydaspes. It was Alexander's costliest battle, as Porus's war elephants inflicted terrible casualties amongst the Greeks. Oh, wow. But despite Porus's fearless leadership, the battle ended in a decisive victory for Alexander, winning him control of the Punjab. Wait, so they was able to train elephants to basically attack? If that's what I'm seeing? That is amazing. Alexander wanted to push on into India to reach the Great River, which ancient Greek geographers said formed the edge of the world. But at the River Hyphasis, known today as the Bias, his army mutinied. His men had marched thousands of miles, fought countless battles, and not seen their homes in eight years. Eight years. They'd heard rumors of gigantic armies waiting for them in India. They refused to go any further. I don't blame them. Alexander was furious but had to turn the army around. He followed the rivers of the Punjab to the sea, a journey that took 10 months. On the way, he defeated the Malians, yeah. but while leading the assault on their capital, was wounded in the chest and nearly killed. Oh, shit. On reaching the coast, part of the army under Nearchus boarded ships and returned to Persia by sea, sailing through the Straits of Hormuz and entering the Persian Gulf. It was one of the great ancient voyages of exploration, as these waters had been previously unknown to Greeks. That was smart. Meanwhile, Alexander led the rest of the army back by land through the Gedrosian Desert today in southern Pakistan. But extreme heat and shortages of food and water led to terrible suffering and many deaths among his army. That's crazy. On his return to Persia, Alexander executed several of his viceroys and governors, men accused of ruling unjustly and robbing temples and tombs during his long absence in the east. At Susa, he arranged a magnificent mass marriage of Macedonian officers to 80 Persian noblewomen to strengthen bonds between his two kingdoms. Alexander himself married two Persian princesses. He also paid all his soldiers' debts and ordered 30,000 youths from across the empire to be trained in the Macedonian art of war. But at Opis, his Macedonian troops mutinied. They were offended by Alexander's apparent preference for Persian advisors and Persian ways. Alexander had the ringleaders executed and made a speech to the men reminding them of the glories they'd won together 
Damn. leading eventually to an emotional reconciliation. At Ecbatana, Alexander's closest and most trusted friend, Hephaestion, died of fever. The king was grief-stricken, went days without eating, and ordered a period of public mourning across the empire. Alexander waged a successful campaign against the mountain raiders of Kossia, who not even the Persian kings had been able to subdue. Returning to Babylon, he was met by embassies from distant peoples, come to recognize his greatness. Ethiopians, Libyans, European Scythians, Lucanians, Etruscans, Man. Gauls, and Iberians. So much power at a young age. Alexander's Bactrian wife, Roxana, was now pregnant. But as he planned his next campaign to Arabia and beyond, he developed a sudden fever and died days later, what? aged just 32. Wow. The cause of Alexander's death has never been established. It may have been malaria, cholera, typhus, or poison. Damn. This success Boy. Alexander died undefeated in battle. His reputation as a brilliant, fearless, and daring military commander remains undimmed. Damn. His decade-long campaign created one of the largest empires ever known, stretching from Greece to Pakistan. But it was vast and unstable, held together only by his own brilliance and name. Alexander left no plans for his succession, and his generals soon began fighting among themselves to carve out their own empires. That's one thing he forgot to do. In the wars of the successors, Alexander's widow Roxana and his young son were murdered. What? His own gold sarcophagus, en route to Macedonia for burial, was hijacked and Damn. ended up in Alexandria in Egypt. Today, its location remains one of the world's great unsolved mysteries. Few men have ever had such an impact on the course of history wow. as Alexander the Great. The breathtaking achievements of his short life ushered in the Hellenistic Age as Greek ideas spread across the territory of his former empire, fusing with local traditions to trigger new developments in art science, government, and language. Some of the successor kingdoms to his great empire were short-lived. Others endured for centuries. But all, in turn, would fall to new forces. And in the west, to the rising power of Rome. Research and artwork. For if only he had a plan of who would take over, you know, if he was to die. But I guess, you know, he didn't really think about that. He really didn't leave a plan behind. Um, but, yeah, he was definitely a great leader. He did make a lot of mistakes. Um, I just wish, you know, he would have kind of, like, took a chill pill but he was on his high and he just wanted to like just kind of like rule the world and he was young so i kind of understand that he was young and it's unfortunate to be a young king you know 20 starting at 20 years old because you're really not that mature you really don't see things from other people's perspective like some of them soldiers that you know that they had that he had that was missing their family and missing you know um their family just probably missing where they're from like traditions and holidays and stuff like that but 
this was Alexander the Great was definitely dope. He was definitely a kick ass leader. Um, you know, it's sad that he died under mysterious deaths. Like, you just don't know how he died. He could have been poisoned. It could have been, um, I don't know. Comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. Give me your thoughts and opinions. And I'm going to do the Napoleonic Wars next. And don't forget to give your girl a thumbs up. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, fam.